Do you know that nowadays you could run your own ChatGPT style AI right on your own computer for free with no coding skills, with no internet needed, with no big tech spying, just you and your own private AI assistant. In this video, I'll walk you step-by-step step through setting up your own local AI chatbot using two amazing tools, Alama and OpenWebUI. Whether you're a curious beginner or just value your privacy, this is for you. Let's break it down in simple terms and give you a real understanding of what these tools actually are. Olama is a tool that lets you run large language models, like Llama, directly on your own computer without needing the internet or any cloud services. It does three key things. First, it downloads AI models like Llama, Mistral, or Gemma. Second, it runs them locally using your computer's CPU or GPU. And finally, it lets you interact with them via the command line or another app. Think of Olama like the engine inside a car. It's doing the heavy lifting, powering your private AI brain. Open Web UI is a user interface, a clean, easy to use chat window that lets you talk to the AI in a way that feels like ChatGPT or Google Bard. It does three key things. First, it connects to Alama behind the scenes. Second, it gives you a modern chat experience in your browser. Third, it lets you save conversations, switch models, and customize behavior. If Olama is the engine, Open Web UI is the dashboard and steering wheel. It makes using your local AI feel familiar and smooth, no coding needed. Let's start with Olama, the tool that actually runs the AI on your computer. It's free, it's open source, and honestly, it's one of the easiest ways to get started with local AI. But first, can your computer handle it? Running an AI model on your own device does use a bit of horsepower, so here's what you'll need. A computer running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. At least 8 gigabytes of RAM, but 16 gigabytes or more is much better. Around 4 to 8 gigabytes of free disk space, depending on the AI model. A decent internet connection, but only for downloading the model once. And of course, a little patience, and me to guide you through it. If your computer meets those basic specs, you're good to go. So, to install Olama, we visit olama.com. Or let's go to Google and search for Olama. And there it is. We click on download. This brings us to the download page. As you can see, there is an installation method for each operating system. For Mac, for Windows, and for Linux. I am using Linux, so I will choose the Linux method, but if you are on Mac or Windows, the process is almost the same. So for Linux, we copy this link here and paste it to our terminal. This will downloads and executes a shell script from the Olama website to install the Olama software on your system. So let's press enter and see what happens. As you can see, it is installing Olama to user slash local. And voila, it is installed. As you can see, it has also detected my NVIDIA graphic card. Now that Olama is installed, we need to load some model into it. Right now, we have just installed the Olama software, which is expected to manage the models we will run. But it does have any model yet. The installed Olama software will now recognize any Olama command we enter. To download and run a model, it is very easy. We just type Olama run and the name of the model. To find the list and name of models supported by Olama, we go to the Olama webpage on the model section. Here you can see a list of models. You can also sort them by newest or popular model. The popular model are the most downloaded, while the newest are the most recently added model. You can for example see that the most recently added one is the Mistral Small 3.2 model while the most popular are the DeepSeek R1 and the Gemma 3 model. A better way to view the models is to go on the GitHub page. There, you not only have the model name, but also the download command on the right. Let, for example, copy the command to download the Gemma 3 model with 4 billion parameters. 
It's a small but quite powerful model developed by Google. Now that we've copied it, we can paste it into the terminal and press enter. Normally it takes some time to download, since the model is about 3.3 gigabytes in size, but if you've already downloaded the model previously, it just launches it. That's what happened for me. I had already run the Olama run Gemma 3 command before, although the model was called Gemma 3 latest at the time, but it's the same model. So Olama simply loaded the model from local storage, making it ready to use. The nice thing is that the same command, Olama run, followed by the model name, works for both downloading and launching. If the model is not installed yet, Olama downloads it for you. If it is already available locally, it just runs it. Now, our chat GPT-like large language model is ready to use locally, fully secured on your computer. No internet connection required, no data sent to the cloud, and no surveillance from big tech. Just you and your private AI assistant. This lightweight model, developed by Google, is a smaller version of Gemini or ChatGPT. With 4 billion parameters, it's not as powerful as the full-scale ChatGPT, but it performs well for everyday tasks. If your graphics card has enough power, you can also download and run larger models, such as Llama 3, Mistral, or the full Gemma, all available from Olama. So let's play with our model and ask it for example, what is the capital of France? And here comes the answer. The capital of France is Paris. Straightforward, accurate, and delivered without needing the internet. Not bad for a tiny genius running right on your machine. Running Olama in the terminal is nice, but you will probably want something more user-friendly, like a proper chat interface, similar to ChatGPT. That's exactly what OpenWebUI provides, a clean, beautiful web-based interface that connects directly to Olama. First, open your favorite search engine and type in OpenWebUI. The first result will take you to the project's official website. There, Click on Get Open Web UI. That redirects us to the project's GitHub page. Now, we scroll down until we find the installation section. There are two ways to install Open Web UI with PIP, the Python installer, or with Docker, the industry standard for running applications in containers. We're going to use the Docker method because it's reliable and consistent across all platforms. Under the Docker section, we see a command labeled if a llama is on your computer. That's the one we should normally use, but it often causes issues where OpenWebUI can't detect the llama server. Luckily, the developers included a fix. We scroll down to the troubleshooting section. There we see a Docker command that solves the problem. It explains, if you are experiencing connection issues, it's often because the Docker container cannot reach the Olama server running at 127.00.1.11434. To fix this, use the network equal host flag. Also note, using this fix changes the port from 3000 to 8080, so we will access the interface at localhost 8080. Let's copy that Docker command. We open a text editor like Sublime Text and paste it in. Now technically, we could run that long Docker command directly from the terminal, but it's cleaner and more scalable to use a Docker Compose file. Here's what that command looks like as a Docker Compose file. As you can see, nothing changes. Same image, same container name, same networking, just more organized. We are going to save this inside a folder called something like dev open web UI. Docker Compose file are saved as docker-compose.yml. Let's delete the Docker command above that we copied from Open Web UI website. Now let's open a terminal and navigate to the folder where our Docker Compose file is located. From there, we run the command, docker compose up minus D. Seems like we need to add the sudo command. Docker will download the image, build the container, and launch the service in the background. Now that it is completed, we can open the browser and head to localhost 8080. We land on the Open Web UI setup page. From there, we click Get Started, and we will be asked to create an account. 
Here, we will enter a username, email address, and password. Don't worry, the email does not have to be real, it's just used locally. As username, we type Nurix. As email, bob at nurix.tech. As password, something simple. Then we click create. And voila, you're inside the Open Web UI interface. As you can see, the models installed with Olama are already listed. If you're not sure which ones you have, you can always check in the terminal with the command Olama list. This give a list of model you installed in Olama using Olama run, followed by the name of the model. As you can see, the model I have inside Olama are the same models appearing inside Open Web UI, ready for us to chat with. All right, let's go back to Open Web UI and play around with one of our models. Let's pick the Gemma 3 model, which has around 4 billion parameters. Now let's try asking it a simple question. For example, what is the capital of Spain? Here's the fun part. We'll intentionally make a small typo. Instead of writing what, we'll write which and see how the model handles it. It gets it right. Despite the typo, the AI correctly understood the question and responded. The capital of Spain is Madrid. So now you've got powerful local AI models like Gemma, DeepSeek, and many others, all running right on your computer. And with Open Web UI, you've got a clean, modern interface to chat with them, just like ChatGPT, but totally private. You can experiment with different models depending on your needs. Some, like Gemma, Mistral, or Llama3, are great for casual conversations, answering questions, or helping you learn something new. Others, like DeepSeek Coder, Code Llama, or Wizard Coder, are designed for more technical tasks like coding, logical reasoning, or summarizing long documents. And that's it for today. You have just turned your computer into a personal AI assistant. No cloud, no coding, just you and the machine. Pretty cool, right? Give a like if this helped you. Subscribe if you want more beginner-friendly tech tutorials. Drop a comment if you ran into trouble. I will do my best to help and answer every question. Until then, stay curious, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!